Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to find volume of solids by slicing method. So suppose we have the base of a solid bounded by y equals to one third x squared, x equal to two, and the x-axis and the y-axis. So the base of the solid is bounded again by the x-axis the y-axis, y equals one-third x squared. So let's write that down. This is y equals one-third x squared and x equals two. x equals two is the vertical line. So let's shade in the base of the solid. Here's the base of the solid. Cross sections Perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. So let's draw it here. Here's the semicircle. That's the cross section. So let's look at an, a different view. Base of the solid, looking from a different angle, it could look like this. Perpendicular cross sections are, let me use blue. Perpendicular cross sections are semicircles. So here we go. This is a semicircle. This is the perpendicular cross section. And if we go further out, we have a smaller semicircle out here. And that would be perpendicular cross section of this solid. So the volume of the solid is adding all the semicircles from zero to two. This line here is x equals to two. And the function below is y equal to zero. Function above, again, is y equals one-third x squared. The semicircle is going to be area of the semicircle equals to one-half pi r squared. The radius is half of the diameter. So here is the radius of the circle. The radius is half. So if we take the function above minus bottom, top minus bottom, that's the line, vertical line, then we get the diameter. So let's write it here. The diameter of the semicircle is going to be top function minus bottom function. That's the diameter. So the diameter is going to be one third x squared minus the bottom function. Bottom function is zero, y equal to zero. Going anywhere along the x-axis, we take a perpendicular cross section. We will see it's gonna be y equal to one third x squared minus y equal to zero. So let's write it out. One third x squared minus y equal to zero. So that is our diameter. To find a radius, you're gonna just take one half of that. So one half of one third x squared. The simplified, we get radius equals to one over six x squared. So the area of a typical cross section, at any time I pick a cross section perpendicular to the x axis, I get half of a circle, which is one half pi times the radius square. So let's write it in. One half pi times one over six x square square. And when we simplify this, we get one over two pi, one times one over 36 x to the fourth, which is one over 72 1 over 72 or pi over 72 x to the fourth how do we find the volume of this solid let's go up here and finish the problem by definition volume of the solid equals the area of the cross section times the thickness dx dx is the thickness and we are adding it from 0 to 2 here's the typical cross section and it has a thickness. So the thickness here is delta x 
and the area is a of x. a of x times delta x give us a typical volume of a cross section. Now, when we put it into the integral sign, delta x becomes dx, and let's substitute the area in. So the area, we are adding all the thin slices, which are semicircles, from 0 to 2. Here we are. From 0 to 2, we're summing up all the area. So let's say, what does it look like over here? This is a typical slice, and it has a thickness. That's delta x. And so we are adding up all the area with very thin slices with thickness delta x. So we are going to put in the area, which is pi over 72 x to the fourth and times the thickness, which is the height, dx. So let's bring out pi over 72 outside of the integral sign. And um, we are integrating from 0 to 2, meaning we're adding all this semicircles between 0 to 2, x to the 4th dx. And when I integrate this, I get pi over 72 times 1 over 5, x to the 5th, and I evaluate this from 0 to 2, meaning I have pi over 72 times 1 over 5, 2 to the 5th minus 0 to the 5th. And when I simplify this, I get 32 pi over 72 times 5, which is 32 is divisible by 8, so that would be 4 pi, and 72 is divisible by 8, that would be 9 times 5, and my final answer would be 4 pi over 45 unit, unit, so should, let's put unit, cubic unit. And that is the volume of this solid using slicing method to the next page and do another example. In this example, we are looking for the volume of the solid whose base is in the region and close by the y equals to 1 minus x squared. So the region looks like this. Here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And the y equal to 1 minus x squared is a parabola pointing downwards and the x-axis so the region bounded looks like this and it stops at y equal to the x-axis here is the base cross section to the y-axis are squares so let me use a different color to show a cross section so here's the cross section the perpendicular to the y-axis and it is a square. So this is the square coming out vertically, cutting through the y-axis. I suggest you pause the video and try it on your own. And you can compare your answer with mine at the end. Remember, cross sections are perpendicular to their y-axis are squares. I just added the per word perpendicular to make it clear that each base is lying perpendicular to the y-axis. So we are adding from zero to the vertex of the parabola. And the vertex of the parabola is gonna be at zero, one. So we're adding along the y-axis from zero to one. So when we add along the y-axis, the thickness is gonna be dy, delta y, and the area is going to be in terms of y. So let's write it here. Perpendicular to y-axis, we are going to use dy. Look at the typical area and a slice of the perpendicular cross-section with thickness. The thickness is going to be delta y 
along the y-axis. So here is the typical cross section. The area is gonna be a square and the thickness here is gonna be delta y. So when we put it into the integral sign, delta y right here is gonna be dy. So let's look here. Delta y is the thickness along the y-axis, how high going from up along the y-axis. So that's delta y. And the area is gonna be base times height. The volume of the thin slice it's just going to be the area times the thickness. So the area is in terms of y, area in terms of y, times delta y. That's the typical slice perpendicular to the y-axis. We're going to call that volume. And let's change that in terms of y. So I need to erase this. And we are using cross-section volume in terms of y. So v of y. Area of a square is base times height. Let's write it here, B times B because it's a square. So we can say area is going to be B square. What is B? B is the length from left to right. Starting at 0 to the right is a distance X. From 0 to the left is the same also x so the length of the base is 2x area equals length of the base is 2x the height is also 2x and the area in terms of x is going to be 4x squared but we need to rewrite the area in terms of y so let's use the function and convert that into y in terms of y. We will write area equals to 4 times x squared. But what is x squared? Let's look over here. y equals 1 minus x squared. So let's put that in parentheses and we'll put it back in later. y minus 1 equals negative x squared x squared is 1 minus y, and x equals plus or minus square root of 1 minus y. We'll put x in terms of y up here, so that's plus or minus square root of 1 minus y square, and that becomes 4 times 1 minus y, and that is the area in terms of y. Now, we substitute it into the volume function, v of y equals 4 times 1 minus y times the thickness, which is delta y. And when we find the volume total from 0 to 1, here's the total volume, we are going to add all the slices along the y-axis stacking from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1. And our function is going to be 4. So let me put 4 outside. Let's write it here. 4 outside. And inside it's going to be 1 minus y. And the thickness in the integral sign is going to be dy. dy is the thickness. So when we integrate, we are going to get 4 times y minus 1 half y squared, evaluate from 0 to 1. That's going to equal to 4 times 1 minus 1 half. Let me erase this part here to make more room because we already know the function a of y. So minus 1 half times 1 square minus 0 minus 1 half times 0 square. That's just going to be 0. So our final answer is going to be 4 times 1 minus 1 half, which is 4 times 1 half, and that's equal to 2. 2 
cubic units, units cubed. And that is our answer for the volume by cross-section perpendicular to the y-axis. Good luck with your homework, and I will see you in the next video.